Welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am joined by Mark Lachance, who is in Southern South Florida. How are you doing, Mark? I'm good. I like how you pronounce the name, John. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if you're going to go for it, you should go for it. That's what I'm, that's my <laughs> philosophy anyway. <laughs> and uh, Mark is a serial entrepreneur, strategic thinker, an investor. Uh, he's a CEO and lead investor of Maxi Media Inc., one of the largest TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, and Google Display Network performance marketing agencies in the world. And also the author of the book, The Lucky Formula, How to Stack the Odds in Your Favor and Cash In on Success. And what we wanted to talk about today is this uh, this concept that maybe not everybody is uh, familiar with. Uh, so if you want to just bottom line and define it for us, uh, Mark, is the concept of blitz scaling. Okay, so a book uh, was written by the founder of LinkedIn uh, a few years back called Blitz Scaling Itself. So there's there's a couple of definitions of it. There's mine, and then there's the book's definition. <laughs> but mm -hmm. the way the book defines it is, you know, raise as much money as possible, and go out there and invest it. You know, invest it properly in in growth, just hyper growth. So my definition of it, you know, the fact that I've never taken you know, investment capital or P private equity money or money from mm -hmm. uh, hedge funds. My definition is taking every single penny or dime of profit and rolling that back into, into hyper growth. So I've done that, you know, three times now I'm on my third go at it. So first time we did it, uh, we, we started with two and we ended when I left, in, in, sorry, in 2001, we had two employees, myself and the founder of the company. We built it from, from two to 240. And when I left in 2006, the next time I did it was in 2009. We built the company from one myself all the way to 215 uh, to 216. And now this last go at it, uh, Maxi Media, we built it from two in 2018. Four years later, we're almost 300. So I'm, uh, wow. you know, I think getting bigger and bigger each time. But basically, <laughs> the gist is taking your money and rolling it to revenue generation. Not anything mm -hmm. else other than revenue generation. So I don't know if you have any questions around that, John. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 a great, and I like the distinction too because, um, you know, that whole idea of basically running out, grabbing loads and loads of money from you know uh, investors and all of that, like that's fine for hyper growth. That's fine. I mean, it tends to to me, it's it's a great scheme for Google AdWords and that because it just seems to end up you the money comes from the investors and go straight out to Google AdWords and then six months later you're coming back looking for more money. So <laughs> the idea that actually creating the money yourself to invest means that you obviously have to create a very, very focused, efficient uh, organization to begin with. Absolutely. But a, a key to it again, as I, I alluded to it, but the fact is revenue generation. So focus on mm -hmm. revenue generation. Somebody asked me a question the other day. So who do you go out and hire first? Do you go out and hire, uh, you know, head of HR, head of legal CFO? I said, mm -hmm. no, 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 those, those are not revenue generation at all. You want to hire, you know, feet on the street salespeople. You want to hire marketers. You want to hire media mm -hmm. buyers. You want to hire revenue generation only. That should be your, your prime focus out of the gate. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally agree, and and I think and I think that's one of the other um, you know fallacies that sometimes it's like putting in immediately people want to put in all these extraneous um, you know functions into the business or middle management and all of that kind of stuff where um, rather than focusing on the on the growth part and really making sure that that is as supported and as efficient as possible so when you go about when you've gone about that with the businesses that you have done this like a number of times now with um how have you started like how have you made sure that the focus stays on the revenue generating activities well i do a on a daily basis i do a a cash i i call it my cash flow sheet so it's um, mm -hmm. it, you know it's not a balance sheet it's not a, a PL. it's actually right. literally yeah. cash flow how much actually i call it cash on hand so what literal cash do I have on hand right now today? Because if you, John, you sound like you understand financial statements, but P&Ls don't sure. tell you the true story, right? No. That's just accounting mumbo jumbo. You re I really <laughs> want to know what my cash position is on a mm -hmm. on a daily basis so then I can take that cash and reinvest it where it needs to be 
needs to go in, in, you know, for revenue generation purposes. Yeah, no, it's, it is because it, it's one thing that often bites people when they, you know, set up their own businesses or whatever for the first time is that, uh, is that idea of, you know, that maybe they'll get some business in, they'll be generating some revenue, but they'll run out of cash because that's the thing is that, you know, revenue is, it's great when you have revenue coming in, but you got to actually get paid for the work. And sometimes you get paid like within a timely fashion. Sometimes you don't, but that's often what bites people is not understanding, understanding liquidity and, and cash flow. But it's really interesting then. So when you have, say you, the first time you did this, say when you, you first generate some decent amount of, of, of profit to reinvest, where, where's the first place you can put it? Is it sales marketing or is it a, a To me, the first place, well, I'm a sales guy, so it's kind of a loaded question yeah. for me. So, <laughs> I'm a, so I, my, my first focus is always in sales and, and marketing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, look, it depends on what type of business you have. So, for example, in my payments businesses, it was sales. Right now in my marketing business, my performance marketing business, it's in it's in marketing or, you know, media spend or or marketers or media buyers. Right. So it just depends what type of business you have. But sales and marketing could be interchangeable, could not be depending on what business you're in. And then the uh, and then how do you um, how do you ensure uh, and, and how do you ensure that it's spent in the right places and in the right way? Because I feel like. You could, you could, especially now. There's so many options, right? And people, you know, we're like, you know, shiny new toys. What was bopping over here and there? How can you? How do you make sure you spend it in the right place? Because I'm sure it's it's very easy to spend it in all the wrong places. Well, John, you know this. You just said it. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to blow money. But I would say test. So I mean, John, mm -hmm. I, I think you're a marketer, right? So mm -hmm. test, test, test. That's the uh, <clears throat> that's the golden rule and try to test it the least amount of money as possible. So, you know, a, a, a tough testing on human beings is tough because you, you're, you're going to make a commitment in terms of salary, but testing online marketing campaign or strategies is you can do it on the cheap, right? So mm -hmm. test, 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 and, and make sure you test as much as possible and diversify your testing across the board. It's the best, uh, best yeah. advice I can give you. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I, I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, I don't think people, you know, test things enough or draw the right conclusions from them. Or uh, sometimes, you know, we're, we're very good at saying, uh, well, you know, there's there there is some impact from this, but, you know, it's not direct. So we're very good sometimes at, at fooling ourselves. So I think the testing part is is critically important. There you go. So look, yeah. often people will will and they'll they'll have a hypothesis and <laughs> they'll test mm -hmm. something. They'll continue to test, and it's almost like the the sunk cost fallacy. You've heard of that before. That term is basically sure. you make an investment, you have an idea, you have a thought, and then you 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 want to prove that you're right so bad that you you know you you dump a tremendous amount of cash into something that's a failure from the beginning. So don't have that sort of ego. Drop your ego. Look, if something doesn't work, it doesn't doesn't work. Your idea was terrible. It was terrible. Move on. <laughs> so. Yeah, and and the and as you're correct, and the sunk cost, like the money's gone. You've done it. Like it's not coming back. So you just have to be able to, you know, move on. It's a bit like it's a bit like going to Vegas, isn't it? You know, you lost your money. Move on. Get in the plane. Go home. Do something sensible. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, you can drive to Vegas from San Diego, so maybe it's yeah. trouble for you. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, not not so not so much. Um, is there anything, um, Mark? Is there any? Are there any a new? Because uh, I mean, you're obviously on the leading edge of of all of these different technologies and platforms and where to go. Where do you think the where do you think the opportunities are? You know, for for these new platforms, or how do you make sure that you stick with the the areas that work for you as opposed to just jumping on everything that comes along? Well, again, it gets back to testing, but right now mm -hmm. what, what's, what's hot, what's really hot. And it depends what industry you're in, but for us, sure. TikTok right now represents 65% of our revenue, 64% of our revenue. Mm -hmm. um, so using TikTok or testing TikTok at least would be, I think it'd behoove everybody. Dep again, depends what, what industry you're in. If you're in a B2C business, TikTok is your place. If you're in B2B, it might not necessarily be the place. You know, Google, you mentioned Google AdWords before B2B might be, Google might be your best bet. So again, it's, it's testing out all the platforms and um, 
you know, fortunately for us, we have, we have that testing mentality and, you know, a couple of years back, two and a half years ago, and we had a problem with Facebook, which people often do. Mm -hmm. uh, lucky we were, we, you know, we were there. TikTok was there for us to test it and, and, you know, take full advantage of the platform. So again, I hate to be a, beat a dead horse, but test, test, mm -hmm. test again. <laughs> yeah. And, and obviously the other part, as you said, is like, make sure you understand where your customers are. Um, uh, as I said in B2B, they may, may be on TikTok, but they may likely be somewhere else or who knows, but it's, it's worth, it's worth checking and it's worth trying. And probably one of the simplest thing is, is to talk to existing customers and understand which of these platforms they tend to, uh, tend to inhabit. Absolutely. That's an excellent point. So do your own market research, you know, reach out to your own database and find out where they're hanging out. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what are some? What are some of the? Uh, what are some of the pitfalls to avoid? Because um, I mean, obviously, focusing a hundred percent on sales, like we are blitz scaling on revenue, so re revenue generating activities. Um, are there any pitfalls or mistakes that you can help people avoid? Well, you are. <laughs> first of all, you're going to make mistakes in in the hiring process, mm -hmm. right? So you, you will hire the wrong people. Um, so here's, here's a good one. So an excellent mistake to try to avoid is, is hiring too quickly. So, mm. you, you know, you want to grow, you want to grow so fast and so bad that, you know, again, you, you mentioned this shiny object. So the first person that walks through your door, you're going to jump on and hire, but you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you go through a long process. The interview process is key asking the right questions. I mean, we've made that mistake a thousand times where Actually, the first media buyer we ever hired was the first person we interviewed, and it was a disaster. So, <laughs> so again, interview process, make it a lengthy process. Um, don't get too excited on any one individual. If you have a position that needs to be filled, interview three, four, five different people for that, for that position. Uh, and fire quickly. That's another one. Mm -hmm. So hire slowly and fire quickly. If you know you made the mistake, you get, you have to make the move and, and, and fire that person. I mean, I've done that. I've had to do that many times. It's not easy. It's not, yeah. uh, it's not fun, but, uh, you know, it has to be done. It just has to be done. Yeah. And I think it's a, I, I think it's a, was Peter Drucker. Maybe he said that was the one mistake, um, that many, um, executives and high level executives made was the, um, it's not hiring the wrong person. We all do that. It's keeping them too long. So to your point is is admitting your mistake, realizing it's not working. It's not working for the other person either. So um, getting out of it as as quickly as possible. But I do think we we do live in we do live in that kind of culture here of it's all about throwing bodies at things rather than figuring out, as you say, like figuring out the position, figuring out how to make it as efficient as possible, and then hiring, taking your time to hire the correct person for that job we just tend to uh, as a culture just throw bodies at things <laughs> well we've done that and and you know like we're we're uh, discussing here that's a mistake and you can throw all the bodies that you you want at a certain problem but if they're the wrong bodies then you're gonna have a you know you're gonna be in trouble so i would take my time i mean again we made the mistake so we're trying to uh, to save the people listening to this, the same mistake that we made. So take your time, hire properly, have the interview process be lengthy. And, you know, instead of 20 questions, why don't you make it 50 questions? And instead of not doing, instead of not calling references, call five references, right? So there's many, many tips and tricks that you can do on the hiring process. And actually, here's a pretty good tip for you. Uh, there's a book called The Winning by Jack Welch. I know he's a, uh, He's a gray beard to the Gen Z, but I think he's, yeah. he's one of probably most intelligent CEOs ever to live. And if you take that book winning and you break it down, you know, from the hiring process to the managing process, that, that's almost my Bible. And that's how I've run, uh, you know, run my companies by using that as a benchmark. So winning yeah, by I'm Jack Welch. Yeah. And to be honest, I use one of his quotes constantly, like both in personal and professional life. And that is like face reality as it is, not as it was or as or how you would like it to be. And, uh, you know, I always think that's a that's such a, a great quote because, you know, we love to like uh, look back or look forward because the future or rather the present isn't working out the way we want it. So we just kind of ignore it. And I think you had to face reality. Um, but, but the point, interesting point though, you say about that uh, whole interviewing and hiring process, because let's face it in, in most organizations, 
we just everybody kind of hates the hiring process so they try to get it over with as quickly as possible it's almost in, instinctively included, John. do Me the included. do the wrong thing <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yes. So, uh, sorry, I, I cut you off, but I th the question was: I think we instinctively hate the hiring process. Yeah. So we don't want to go through it, and we want to get it done. We want to get it over quickly. And, and I'm the same way. I, I get that. You know, when I have to be the you know the beginning of any business when you're building it, you have to be head of HR, you know, head mm -hmm. of uh, legal, head of everything, and you know, you basically have to hire everybody. So get over that that distaste for hiring and, and just jump into it. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. go ahead, John, you had, you had a question. No, I was going to say there's, a, there's another, uh, I think there's another pitfall that sometimes people fall into is, is when they go, they say, okay, I'm, I'm, I need to hire somebody. There's all these things that need to be taken care of that I can't. And they start to put together this kind of composite job of all these bits and it doesn't have a proper focus and it's not really set up properly for, for success. And I think that's the other part is you really need to define really specifically what the job is, what they're going to do, how they're going to, con how they're going to contribute. Cause otherwise you get a lot of these kind of strange hybrid roles that people, you know, are hired for and, and it's set up for lack of success for set up for failure for both sides. Uh, I'll actually answer that two ways. I'll say yes mm -hmm. and I'll say no. Uh, right. I agree with you and I don't agree with you. In the beginning, you have to hire jack of all trades, right? So for example, when we were hiring for media buyers, we hired people that had sort of a roundabout um, kind of, because we knew we knew that the people might not succeed as media buyers, but they could take on a an operations role. Mm -hmm. And that happened a lot of times. So in the beginning, yes, but as you as you mature as a company, sorry, in the beginning, no, you want to maybe hire generalists and less, mm -hmm. you know, you're in the sales game, John, you're in the sales game, you understand that a salesperson's a salesperson's yeah. a salesperson, but, <laughs> and, you know, so you can, outside of sales, you can hire generalists, but when, as the company matures, you want to laser, so I agree with you a thousand percent that you want to laser target the right person with the right skill sets that has a, a, clearly defined role so in that sense yes i agree with you a thousand percent yeah and obviously as part of that is defining the job properly and all of that good stuff again right. things that we love to not do uh <laughs> be, and let's face it i mean what most company we're hiring it's not like oh we're going to hire for exposition here go do a search on the internet find a job description that fits that and we'll just modify it and I think that that's where you start to fall into problems because you're hiring from somebody else's who probably copied that from somebody else too, as opposed to really <laughs> focusing on what you want the person to be able to do. And you, you're really uh, finding everything, all the mistakes that I made, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the mistakes you made, I mean, all the things that I've done myself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to, to your point, I mean, I do think that hiring is – is one of the hardest things and um and especially if you're hiring for sales that's like even one of the, even more hard um but we don't you know it's hard and we know it's hard but we avoid putting the effort in and i think that's the big point here is that you know the more focus and effort you put into the hiring the, the better you will be in the long run absolutely agreed 100 percent. so thank you for bringing that point up Perfect. Well, um, listen, Mark, what's, what's the last piece of advice you would have to anybody who maybe is, uh, maybe they're stagnating a little bit in their, in their growth. Maybe things aren't working out the way they would like it. What, what's one thing you would say to them to get their business kickstarted? Okay. Well, do they have mentors? Do they have, are they, what, what's their circle of influence look like? So for example, who's on your speed dial? Who, who are you going to call? You have a problem in your business. You're stagnating. Who are you going to call? Are you going to call the person that you know, has, you know, doesn't have a business at all or, or, you know, has a stag stagnating business themselves. What does your Rolodex look like? If it, if it's filled with people that are movers and shakers and people that are, you know, can give you great advice, then, you know, you can get kickstarted again. Are you going to events? Are you surrounding yourself with people that are, that are crushing it, that are moving and shaking? And if you're not, that's why you're, you're stagnating. So it's a lot to do with these, your circle of influence, the people you hang around with, you know, Jim Rohn's famous quote, you're, you're, you are the aggregate or the average of the five people you hang around with. Um, so those are the, the key factors. So, you know, change your circle if you're stagnating, change the people, your confidants, get a mentor and go to events, go to uh, trade shows, marketing shows, 
conferences. So all those, you know, those three simple things can literally turn your business around quickly. Yeah, no, that's fantastic advice, Mark. Pretty, uh, particularly, I love the, the mentor piece and making sure that you're surrounded by the right people because, you know, let's face it, uh, best best people to learn from are the people who have already been there, done that, and, uh, you know, can, can help you out. Well, listen, Mark, this has been fantastic. All of Mark's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Okay. Well, like you said, originally, I'm the author of The Lucky Formula, How to Stack the mm -hmm. Odds in Your Favor and Cash In on Success. Um, I'd like to give your uh, your listeners a gift. Actually, it's The Lucky Quiz. And so it's basically an assessment that scores your, your ability to attract luck or to be successful on a scale of zero to 100. So that's... Uh, <laughs> So you're going to go to theluckyformula.com slash quiz. Again, theluckyformula.com slash quiz. And John, I expect you to take the quiz. I want to know your score. And uh, I'm pretty excited to see it. I think it's going to be pretty high, John. I get that feeling. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I'll have to take it anonymously first or with some other email just in case I screw it up completely. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, listen, thanks again, Mark. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you, John.